Among the most powerfully intuitive arguments against procreation are those about risk and consent. Arguments of this kind urge people to consider whether it is acceptable to create a risk for someone without the consent of the individual in question to do so. And so to illustrate this point, I'm going to use a hypothetical that's used by Shana Schifrin. Though it's important to say that Schifrin, uh, I believe, used it to make a slightly different point. But in any case, the hypothetical goes like this. Imagine a very wealthy person, and we'll refer to this person as simply wealthy. Wealthy wants to share their wealth with the people who live on a neighboring island. The people on this island, however, are doing fine without this additional wealth. Uh, that is to say, they won't be harmed without it. And the problem for wealthy is that, for whatever reason, the only way to share this wealth is by dropping blocks of gold onto the island from a plane. Wealthy decides to take the risk. And as wealthy as dropping these blocks, making an effort not to hit anyone, they can only hope that no one will be seriously injured or killed in the process. Now, suppose wealthy had no way of communicating with the people of this island. And so getting their consent was not an option. The question is, do we think that wealthy does something wrong by dropping the gold? Now, I suspect many people, if not actually most people, would say that wealthy does something wrong here. But what exactly do we think is wrong in this case? Is it the fact that wealthy acts without the consent of the people on the island? But this seems significant. But this alone does not seem sufficient to blame wealthy. Because, after all, if the people on this island were known by wealthy to be desperately in need of this additional wealth, such that not having it would foreseeably result in far greater harm for them overall than the potential harm imposed on them by wealthy, wealthy's action might be defensible. What makes this case troubling is not merely the fact that a risk is imposed. It's that the risk is not imposed in order to mitigate or prevent any serious pain, any problem. In other words, there was no need to create this risk, inasmuch as no one would have suffered any harm in the absence of this risk being imposed on them. And so what people object to in a case like this, it seems to me, is that an unnecessary risk is being imposed. And you notice that even if we imagine that some people get lucky and are able to receive this wealth uh, safely and are quite happy to have received it, this would not render wealthy's unnecessary recklessness permissible. But what troubles us in wealthy's case applies equally to procreation. At first, no one can seriously doubt that life can be a harm. Life can be bad, a very bad. So there is, quite clearly, a risk in being born. A second, no one is harmed by not being born, and so no one needs to be born. And lastly, consent is not possible, and so life is always imposed. And so just as in Wealthy's case, any time we bring someone into existence, an unnecessary risk is being imposed on someone. And so it seems to me that if one accepts that wealthy's action is wrong, one would also have to accept that procreation is wrong and for the same reason. To insist that procreation is an exception here uh, just strikes me as special pleading. So that is all for now. Thanks for listening.